Rightio, let's go, hey. Welcome back to another episode. This one is gonna be a ripper. It's one of our favorite parts of the country. We're north of Broome, and we're going up to the Dampier Peninsula in Cape Levick. So, oh mate, it's 180 k's from here to the top. First aid is dirt, second aid is bitumen, and there's got everything, mate. It's got free camps, low cost camps, wilderness camps, uh, Aboriginal culture, pearling history, Pearl Farm Tours, uh, it's got a lot mate. So our plan is to try and do it fairly cheaply. We're taking the van up. We haven't pulled the van up here before. The road can be a bit of a caravan killer. But we've got the hot tip that uh, I think it's been graded a couple of days ago, so we might be all right. For us, uh, first few sites are gonna be Willard Creek, Bard Creek, James Bosch Point, Quandong Point. We're gonna do the free camps sort of halfway up the peninsula. And then uh, we'll keep going. We'll go right to the top. We'll stay up at one of the bush retreats. It's gonna be good. Cape Levick, Dampier Peninsula. Woo! Let's go! Rightio, so here we go. First turn off Minari Road and it takes you into the Willie Creek Pearl Farm and you can also go to Bard Creek, Quandong Point, Price Point and Minari. That's us. She's pretty gnarly but uh, there's a big sign there too, crockwise. Woohoo! Look out, watch your kids. Rightio, come and check this out. This is our spot at Willie Creek. Look at this, mate. The colour of that water is just seriously off tap. Pulled in here, the access road in was super easy. A couple of sandy sections, a few corrugations, a uh, bit of dry mud flats that we got through as well. But then come around here, this is where we've pulled up. A bit of low range sand to get in here. And look at the view we've got straight out the front of the van, hey? What do you reckon of this, mate? Willie Creek. I know, how gorgeous is it? Oh. I'm just getting hats for the kids. Mate, I'm stoked with this, hey? Looks pretty fishy too. So I'll give you a hot tip about the fishing here. For me, in my experience, I've found an hour either side of the low tide to be the best. Seems to, um, the current slows down because you get such big tides up here. You have to fish it near the top or the bottom of the tide. Otherwise you get too much current and you won't be able to keep a bait out there. Anyway, here's hoping, a couple of barra. Well, I tell you, we've picked a pretty shit spot for our first night on the Dampier Peninsula. Hey? Oh, how terrible is that view? What do you reckon, mate? Yeah. Oh, jump out of the way there. What do you got? You got snags on the cooker. We're trying to make a good oh. marshmallow hole. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, once you eat all your dinner, we can crack the marshies out. And then mum and dad, they're going to put a chook on there, a split chook. We'll cook it up. But how good is that sunset? Okay. It's going off. to be amazing. <laughs> so we didn't, uh, didn't have any luck fishing, take but I think the tides off. are wrong. Because they're so big up here. You have to sort of fish an hour either side or high or low, otherwise there's too much run. Uh, and it's too hard to keep a lure in the water, Don't so water my we'll have another crack Don't tomorrow at low tide way. and see how we go. Don't water. Right, uh, dinner for mum and dad tonight is a split chook from Woolies. Uh, so easy, they're like 10 bucks if that. Already marinated, I'm just going to chuck it on here without dropping it in the dirt. And then, the good thing about this little jobby is I can just unhook it, drop it as low as I can. And then, bang, hey? Cook it as a Friday. Yeah, hey, up here, Jack. So that's us for dinner, mate. Hey, it's gonna be bloody good. I'll and um, I reckon about 20 minutes, half hour on that. No. And um, if I can keep myself out of the smoke, uh, it'll be a bloody nice dinner. Marshmallows. <laughs>
day two, morning at Willy Creek. Come and check this out. I'll quickly show you out our window. Oh yeah, hey? Tide's looking good. Another hour, I'll stop running and I'll go down there and have a flick for a barra. But normal morning routine for us, coffee straight up in the morning. Help. The kids are doing schoolwork. This morning Jack's doing his distance oh. ed. Bill, what are you doing, mate? Sight words. Sight words. He's getting good at them. And He's Charlie just right. seems to oh. float, <laughs> float around. She's our floater. Being a bit of a half pest, half funny sometimes. But. Sometimes she's down. She's got her own like little workbook. So sometimes she sits down and colours in or does some stuff. Or she's with Justin <laughs> outside, like going fishing or something. So. Yeah. She yeah, just, yeah, we call her our floater. <laughs> or going hunting. Yeah, going hunting. <laughs> but anyway, I'll give you a bit of a heads up on the plan today. We will pack up, drive down the rocks, turn around, and we'll bail out up the coast to another campsite. So, like we told you yesterday, there's a few different ones. There's um, Quandong Point, James Price Point, Bard Creek. Um, we'll go and have a look at those, and we'll pull up, have another bloody nice Arvo campfire, bit of a cook maybe a cold beer, and uh, we'll show you around. Rightio, so we've decided we're gonna hit Bard Creek, which is the next one up from Willie Creek on this Minari Road. It's only about 20 k's, 25 minutes, and the road is pretty bloody good. If you check this out, we've been doing about 60 the whole way. Um, any slower and it's a bit rougher, but the corrugations aren't that bad. They're fairly soft and sandy, you know, so we've been punching along here. We're just about to turn off on Bard Creek Road and then it's only a K down to the beach camp. So a little bit windy, but I reckon we'll be all right. It's been dropping off about um, two or three every hour. Boat. So we've seen a few photos. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? They look unbelievable. There's like this massive sandbar and this beautiful blue creek, Bard Creek. So we're going to hit that, hopefully get a campsite relatively close near the water but we'll see how we go yes this is the track into the bard creek beach camping site so there's a couple of sites you'll find them on wiki camps back on the creek side which is super easy to get to and this one here uh it's a bit of a sandy trail spinning around and a lot of trees that are pretty close so you'll see this um <laughs> you have to be where you'll get a few little side stripes down the side of your van and it's a little bit soft so we're just poking along low range because you can hit a couple of soft lumpy sections but pretty bloody nice eh? you've got to drive down here a couple of k's across the track onto the beach front and then come back to the creek so it says on wiki camps you can get four drive caravans in there so we'll give it a go hopefully it ain't too soft and we can run down to the creek because it looks epic mate anyway we've got the missus driving i might just sit up here and i might stop and grab a beer pretty bloody nice eh? <laughs> yeah Rightio, well, I'll tell you what, we've had a bloody good second day up here on the Dampier Peninsula. I'll give you a good look at uh, this sunset, mate. Daddy's gonna fly the drone. This is Bard Creek, and right where we are yep. is tidal, so you've got to be careful. careful. We yep. check the tides yep. uh, so we know they're not going to get any higher than this today. Go, and uh, we walked yeah. down here yes. before we drove down, so it's not like we're going to get stuck down here in swamp, but I'll tell you. Sit here with a fire tonight and watch this sun go down. It's gonna be pretty bloody nice, isn't it? I'm stoked. <laughs> <laughs> we had uh, so well, good. pretty much got it all to ourselves. There's a few others that have rocked up here late in the Arvo to chill out for the sunset. But oh man, campfire, this. Ah. Tell you though, the fishing's been disappointing. So I've fished all day and I've had one run and I reckon it was a shark because as soon as I picked up the rod, Cut me off straight through the braid. 50 pound braid too, so had a live mullet on there. So I'm guessing it was a shark. It got me on the outgoing tide, so it's been a bit um, deflating, the old fishing. But I tell you, far out, I've never seen so many turtles coming in with the incoming tide. 
every 30 seconds there was another new one floating past. It was brilliant. So check it out, Bard Creek Beach Camping. It's pretty bloody nice, eh? And this is only the first two spots. We've got so many more to hit going up this peninsula. Loving it. So damn good. And now we guess how much it's cost us? Zero. Radio. On the menu tonight is bloody Red Emperor. I got it from a mate in Port Hedland who goes out fishing quite a bit. Um, I'm not lucky enough to be able to go out on a boat that far because I get freaking seasick. Anyway, we got a few slabs of it, plus Spanish mackerel, plus heaps of other good stuff. Uh, my go-to is just a beer batter. Literally, it's like home brand self-raising flour and whatever beer I've got, whisk it up into a nice consistency so it's like sort of pancake batter and then drop it into uh, some hot canola oil. I tell you, it's, it's the way to go, eh? I do it outside here because it um, usually spits and farts around and um, you get oil all over the van inside so it's easy enough just to cook it outside here and I get to look at this while it goes down too. So. What's the verdict? Oh my god. <laughs> Legit my favourite meal in the world. This is, I don't know if I've ever had bloody red emperor before, but... So freaking good. I've said it before, but holy hell, mate. But Justin doesn't, boy, that's mine. But can you not see there's a whole yeah, car Yeah, but that's yeah. mine. Justin does a really good batter though, so it's really crispy and I don't know why, it's just beer and flour. Yeah, so but it's just, he doesn't, what's that thing? Yeah. I don't, um... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Tell the story. You know no, what I'm don't. saying, you do. Yeah. Flour yeah. or something. Yeah. You know how people put flour yeah. in its yeah. forehead? Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to come behind yeah. me yeah. and then tell you to come behind me and then pull me away from you. Ah, good morning again. This is day three and we are still at Bard Creek. I'm hiding inside because you should, I don't know if you can hear that, the bloody wind. Have a look out this window. Can you see all the sand? Oh, maybe not. But we have been getting absolutely pumped by the wind all night. Sandblasted. Oh, mate, I'll show you. You watch this as soon as, I'm going to take you outside. As oh soon as God. I open this door, it like, whew, it comes back in like a backdraft. So we've got to hurry up, ready? Go. Oh, 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 Jesus. So I told you it was windy. I can hardly even be out here, mate. So we're just going to pack up and leave today. But oh, I'll get out of the wind a bit. I just want to try and show you that uh, it's a wicked spot, but it's pretty open to the elements because we're bang on the coast here. So anyway, maybe check the wind forecast. It's supposed to drop out tomorrow to nothing. So we're gonna head up and stay at a place called Kwandong Point. And uh, we should have a couple of good days there of uh, no wind and just beautiful weather. Far out this sand. Look at this under the van here. I've been like fully sand blown. <laughs> all, the, all the top sand's gone. And we're just down to the hard stuff under the van here. <laughs> it's making these mountains on the other side. So anyway, well, I'll leave it there because I can't see. <laughs> Righto, so you can see on the map here, uh, this is Broome, down the bottom here in Ganthian Point. So we came up this way, uh, there's Cable Beach. We came out this road and in. This is our first campsite at Willie Creek. And then we took this track up along here. This Minari Road takes you all the way up. This is Bard Creek where we've been. And then we're just going to keep going up Minari Road. And we're going to stay at Wondong Point. And then we're going to go to James Price Point. There's a couple more campsites up here. So we'll see how we go. And then you come back out this Minari Road onto Beagle Bay Road, which is the one that takes you all the way up to Cape Beach. So that's it for now. Let's get cracking.
Rightio, so I'm going to show you our campsite at Kondong Point. This one's a bit different at sunset because we haven't got the sun going down at the front of us over the water because we're on the point and facing the other way. So today, the sun went down behind the van, which is pretty cool actually. It come down through the trees and that. But then tonight, have a look at this, would you? Oh, oh, just about a full moon coming up over this side. And as the sun goes down, all these colours change out here. Tide will be up again in the morning. It'll be bloody beautiful. Campfire going. Kids are having dinner. Are you eating your veggies or not? And veggies. You better be. How are you going, gave, Bill? And she gave the um, sausages to Jack. Oh, good stuff. And she got one of them to do it right there. Oh, wow. Are you going to eat that for dessert, that one? No. <laughs> all right. Anyway, here we go. I'll show you what we're having for dinner. These things are bloody brilliant when you're camping. You just buy those butterfly lamb. Yeah, I think they're a shoulder. And they come cryovac from Woolies, already marinated. And then in here, what's the cook go going on for the rest of it, mate? Ah, don't come in, it's messy this in here. Bit up here. No, I'm just doing, um, got some veg on the boil. And we're having lamb. Pork? Lamb. Lamb, mate. Lamb. There you go, I didn't even know. <laughs> lamb and veg. veg. So we're, we're getting pretty bare, aren't we? Too. We're running the bare essentials oh, we now. Are. We don't have any salad stuff left. And basically using our last veg tonight, so. It's all good. Right. Anyway, just thought I'd show you around. Different sort of campsite, just as beautiful. And uh, when we get up in the morning, I'll have a coffee. Come out here and show you this at high tide. The colour of that water there is pretty damn spectacular. Good stuff. If you eat it all up, you can get a couple of marshies. What do you reckon? I my Ooh, there you go. That's what she looks like, all done and dusted. This is my dinner table for the night. How's yours go, mate? So good. I haven't even tapped in yet, but it looks bloody the goods. There you go. You've got a primo spot down there, mate. Right. Look at this. This is pretty bloody nice. So today we're going to James Price Point. So from Kwandong Point, come back out onto the same road, the Spinari Road, hook a left, and we've got about 15 k's to go. Uh, and the road starts to get a little bit worse than it has been, but that's going to depend on the time of year you do it, the traffic and stuff. So anyway, this is it, Beck. Look out this way. Starts to get a bit tighter up here. Just stop and let some traffic past. And um, we'll be there in about 20 minutes. Get out, find a spot at James Price Point. Pretty keen, hey? The weather is going to be mid for the next four and a half days. Looking forward to it. Hopefully, we can get some bloody fish, mate. Finally, it would be good if we can actually pull up and get some bloody fishing done and actually catch up. So we want fish we're running, for dinner. We're running low. We've been using all our reserve stocks in yes. the freezer, so we need to catch some. James Price Point. Can you bloody believe it? Look at this, mate. This is where we've pulled up with the van on this bloody, it feels like Mars, I reckon, this red dirt landscape. It's pretty barren, but the coastline here is just insane, eh? Hey? It's low tide at the moment. It's only gonna get better. Uh, you can camp all the way along here. You can get cliff top camps up there, so you're actually looking down, but there's no real easy beach access for the kids. We've come down through this cutting here and we're just parked up on this nice bit of red dirt. Uh, but we've got absolute beachfront views. And it's nice and level. Oh, it is dead set amazing, mate. Can't believe it. James Price Point, 
You are a ripper, mate. Got a bit of shade out today because it's pretty hot. The sun's coming in. Have a fire down near the Savo. We'll show you that. Sunset is going to be crazy. And I'll bring you inside. Uh, I'll show you. Becky, what have you been doing, babe? Baking a cake because it's Jack's Ooh. birthday today. Baking a um, Is that the word for it? When I, you put it in the I know, microwave? microwaving a cake. Yeah. So we just picked up, I just buy packet stuff. He wanted a butter cake, so I've got him a butter cake, but we don't have an oven. So we normally use a Ziggy, but this time we've thrown it in the microwave five minutes. Works a treat, mate. This is the second time I've done it now, and it works pretty well. So I'm just going to um, ice it, a few sprinkles. Few candles, and that's his cake. Yep. I'm very basic. Big number seven for the Jacko today. His fourth birthday in the caravan. He's seven today, and he's pumped. He's had such a good day. Oh, he's just loving it. Yeah. He's like, oh, geez, I love it. You know, I can't believe Ten I'm seven. seven. Can't, can't believe, believe it. it. <laughs> anyway, he got a um, little remote control buddy boat car thing, and I'm going to take him near the beach now and drive it around. So, anyway, James Price Point. We'll show you a bit more later. Come on, Dad. I am loving it here. Billy, where's your hat? We are going to sing Jacko Happy Birthday. Happy um, Birthday. We normally do cakes in the afternoon, actually, for afternoon tea, and then the Boring. kids aren't on a sugar high <laughs> uh, at 7 pm at night, which is when they go to bed. I think they just ran out of gas. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday, dear Jacko. Happy birthday to you! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hooray! Hey, happy birthday, bro! You're bloody seven years old. Still going. Do you want to wait for them to? I'm gonna blow it. You won't be able to. And there it is, hey? I told you it was going to be a good sunset. It is orange as there. That is crazy. Dinner tonight is uh, a couple of sirloins cooked over the fire, which is going to be bloody fantastic. And uh, the kids are having beer battered uh, Spanish mackerel. So, pretty good feeds all around tonight. Sit around here, crank this campfire up, and just watch this. I reckon. How many stars do you reckon there'll be tonight, mate? I reckon there'll yeah, be Yeah, it'll be pretty good. Thousands yeah, of them. Definitely. It'll be mint. So, good spot this, James Price Point. She's a winner and it's free. Gotta love a good freebie. Right, oh, so the fish is all done. How bloody good does that look? I'm gonna have a couple of sneaky pieces of that. Come over here and I'll show you what me and Beck are having. You frothing for this or what? I know, I just, you know when you need a steak? Like, I just need my steak tonight. <laughs> I'm so excited. Look at this little setup, hey? And not, did you catch that? Ho oh, oh, ho, okay. Anyway, I would have shown you this before I hang this off my tripod, but this here is a little aluminium plate that came, oh actually I bought for the Ziggy to put on the grill, but I thought I'll throw that on there and I'll be able to throw my steaks on. Oh, I'll try and flip them without, oh yeah, without ending up in the fire. And then once I've seared them either side, I'm going to, Ah, rip that grill off and throw them straight on the uh, open fire. It's going to be bloody nice, I tell you. Anyway, hot tip with these. Every steak I do, I leave it out room temperature for a couple of hours. I salt and pepper both sides and wrap it in paper towel. And doesn't it make a difference, mate? It does. Huge difference. Even the worst of steak, it just comes out mint. Yeah. Give it a go. I don't know. I did, um, where did I see it? I seen it on a Jamie Oliver show. And mate, I've done, it, I've done it ever since, and it comes up, honestly, the nicest bloody steaks, so. Here you go, here's the finished product. Not that, that's the kid's fish. Can't believe they didn't eat all that far yet. Oh, there's a fair bit there. Look at that, nice sirloin on the bone over the fire, and ooh, what's this? 
little cheeky cray tail. Right? Giddy up. I haven't had one of them over the coals before, so let's see how we go, but I don't know. Do I, do I get the tick of approval, my love? Always, with your steak, always. Mm, I'll tell you what, this is gonna be good stuff, eh? Righto. You have to get on the beach when you're at James Price Point. Drop your tires right now and get down here on the white stuff. Check it out. <laughs> you can drive along here with the big red cliffs on one side and this water on the other. Make sure you check the tides, but we know the tide's going out, so we'll be all right. And we're just gonna find our own little patch of beach here and pull up and go for a swim. So there's heaps of nice little safe sort of rock pool areas so you can see what's in there. Nice and shallow. Man. Good for the kids. Mate, this is just yeah. beautiful, isn't it? Look at that beach, that is crazy. <laughs> Father's Day today, and um, can I speak? Let's go again. It's Father's Day today, and we are heading up towards Cape Levique. I'm pumped. We've been sitting put for a couple of weeks by old Becky Boo, done a, a uni placement at the hospital. So yeah. I've been doing daddy daycare 24 7. Yeah, I know, mate. As if. Oh, okay, well, I'm not going to say that ever again. <laughs> but anyway, no, it has been a bit tough. I've had to, you know, I miss having Beck around to sort of split. The, yeah. uh, the time with the kids and it's a bit of a juggle when um, she's going to work all day. Um, anyway, we're off. We're going to Cape Levique. We're going up to a place called Pender Bay. We've never been there. We've only ever been up to the top which is Cape Levique and we stayed in a little humpy there last time. This time we got the van in tow. We're going to show you what it's like, the road conditions, <laughs> how long it takes to get there and we'll show you Pender Bay and we're going to explore a bit while we're up there. So let's get going. I won't bore you anymore with this chit chat. Let's hit the road, eh? <laughs> So we're back on the Cape Levique access road, mate. Hey? We're back, we're, we're back. Pumped. Here she is, this is where the bitumen stops and it tur turns to dirt. So you've got about a 90 kilometer stretch, I reckon, and then it turns to bitumen again. So we've stopped, aired down with our trusty deflator. Now someone asked me before, how long does it take you to get around and air down? Well, it's gonna depend how far you go in PSI, but I just went around and did everything to about 20 PSI, uh, and it took me about nine minutes, I reckon. So it doesn't take long at all. I've taped up the van, so I've used a bit of cardboard. I've showed you that before to try and keep the dust out of the van. Um, so now, let's go. And don't be afraid to drop your tyres, eh? Some people sit on dirt roads, leave them at 40 PSI. No way. Just take them down. It's so much easier on your gear and your van if you just drop your tyres and give it that bit of cushion, mate. So I know this road's just red dirt and corrugations. There's no sharp rocks. There's no gnarly things. So I ain't going to expose my sidewalls to any damage and all that sort of stuff. There's a few things to think about, but this road, all sandy and corrugations. Let's try and make it as smooth as we can and not shake the shit out of the van. So we have just dropped our tyres and we're heading up the access road. Now, depends on what time of year and what day you get up here as to what condition you're going to get it in. It's uh, the start of it. It's pretty bloody average, I can tell you. But anyway, I'll pop this one on and show you what it looks like. The whole road's sort of shaped like a bit of a big, big red skate pole, like this. And up either side is like a big spoon drain and then you just got to try and find a smooth patch in the middle, mate. So, oh, anyway, our tyres are down. We'll drive to, uh, we'll find a happy speed that's not so damn rough. Uh, and hopefully we can get up and back without any dramas. Go. Righto, we have just hit the black stuff again. Thank you for that. Um, it's about 86 k's I've recorded it as on my speedo, if it's right. Um, sat between 60, 70 k's an hour. Uh, no real dramas. Can't go any quicker, not because of the ruts, just because every now and then you get a few of those whoops 
or some dust holes that throw you a bit out of whack. And if you're going any faster than that, I reckon you might be a bit in trouble, you know, you get a bit of a wobble up or start getting all over the shop. So just stick around that 60, 70 Ks. It's taking us an hour and 20 minutes, so it's not too bad. Anyway, let's keep rolling. Well, 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 15 kilometers to go, my love. Longest 15 yeah. kilometers and, uh, of my life. The road has just turned to real SHIT. I'll, I'll put some GoPros on to show you what it looks like. But, wow, it's not super bad, but it's just relentless, mate. So. Yeah. Anyway, at least 15 really k's hard. to go, and we you can't really get over 40 without absolutely stirring things up big time. So, just gonna poke along. It's just all soft, sandy corrugations, eh? So, anyway, <laughs> well earned beer by the time we get there. Oh, it's all about the beer. <laughs> Beers and barra. Oh, Boy, I've got a hot tip for you. If you're looking for a phone holder, beer travels, mate, this thing. It's been the best thing we've ever bought. It's been in our car for about five months now. It's never once come off the damn dash. It's like a suction cup thing that you lock on and it automatically charges your phone without plugging anything in. All you have to do is tap the button on the back, automatically opens for you. How good is this? It charges wisely through there. You just plug in the bottom one to a, a USB socket down here. But watch this, this is tricky, man. Ready? Slap it on and it automatically closes and clamps on your phone. Doesn't matter what size it is. So, oh, I don't, I can't remember all the info for it, but I will drop the info in here somewhere on the screen, and I'll also put it in the post details, the video details, because um, I'll give you a discount code so you can go and buy one, mate. Legit, the best thing inside the car, apart from wifey. Okay? Don't mind the state of our car. Oh, um, mate, it's all right. The kids are a little bit sick at the moment, so there's like tissues, and we bought. We're at the shops this morning and at the chemist's, there's receipts and crap everywhere. We're normally a little bit more tidy. Don't lie to people, man. We are! We are so not. This is probably pretty clean. No, this is disgraceful. Yes. I care. I clean it up, mate. I will when we pull up. <laughs> Yes, how good is this? Hey, I'm gonna give you a sneak peek at our setup before we even set up. This is our spot, C6. Look at this, Woo. straight onto the beach. It's low tide now. Can you imagine when this kicks up the high tide? Oh, there's like campsites all the way along the cliff, like epic views and stuff. And then you come down the bottom here to C6 where we are. I'm just gonna back up a bit and then level the van and stuff, but whew. high tide. Sunset, fire, beers. Oh. I think that's the first thing I need to do, okay? First thing on the agenda, let's get a cold beer out and smash into it. And just like that, mate, we are set up at Pender Bay Escape. What do you got going on here, mate? We've got my espresso martini. I've not a sip yet. Looks all right. Give us mm. a go, have a go. Tell mm -hmm. us what you think. Too busy, hey? A few tunes on, a bit of gunners. It's a bit weak, oh, is it? to be honest. 7% yeah. mate, it's weak. Mm, yeah. Jesus. Anyway, look at this. Ah, there's the ute and the fridge. Number one priority, cold beer. And then, number two, mat out, keep the sand out to keep this one happy. What? And then we're good. The red dirt, mate. Oh we'll yeah, keep that Just out. kick the mat out and we're laughing. Cheers. So good. Oh, number three. Oh, oh good throw at the frisbee nice jacker. One. Kids are frothing because they can just run flat out down here. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's Father's Day today, and uh, I don't know if I could spend it anywhere better, to tell you the truth, dear. It's a pretty good spot, isn't it? Pretty good spot for Father's Day. Yeah. I'll just, I'll leave you with this, a cold Corona, and a view as the sun goes down. Um, anyway, we'll show you more over the next few days, but it's going to be good. We've got four nights here, and we'll go exploring, and uh, give you some info, so you can hit it yourself. So if you're feeling a little bit romantic while you're at Pender Bay or when you plan to come to Pender Bay, um, and if you've got a missus who's as randy as mine, then oh. you might want to get 
on oh site C2. Don't listen to us, she'll start lying to you. Check this out, hey? C2, you've got a couple of uh, bathtubs here. Tap on the side and then look at that view. Are you serious? Fireplace, oh mate, it's pretty bloody insane. And then swing around, it's a huge campsite too. You could literally park your van across the front there, have your own private little Pender Bay Spa. Hey, a bit legit. Awesome, I reckon. We did try and book this site, but um, I don't know why. They said there was someone on it, but there's been no one here for a couple of nights. But I think we lucked out anyway. We're on C5 or C6, and I reckon that's better. Like that's, this is cool for the baths, but I reckon C6 is better for a long-term stay, better access to the beach, that sort of thing. So, look at that view. Isn't that crazy? So, things to do around Pender Bay. There is a couple of beaches you can drive on. So when you pull in, it'll give you this map and it'll show you a couple of spots where you're allowed to drive with vehicle access. There's a boat ramp here as well. And um, it's all the sites are labeled, right? And uh, where we are at C6, if you come down the other end, walk around the rocks 800 meters, there's some cool rock pools and stuff. We'll go and do that tomorrow and show you that one. But today, we're just gonna float down the beach, drive down, set up, tide's coming in, have a bit of a swim. And uh, we'll give you a, a bit of a look at that. It's bloody beautiful down there, eh? The so cliffs, nice. the water, the sand. So we'll make our way down there. I don't think the beach looks pretty hard. So unless the access is super soft and gnarly, I think it should be a pretty easy little mission. So we walked from our uh, from the van, and um, we found this awesome rock pool. And then beside that is a cave. So today's mission is finding some rock pools in a cave. So. When you check in, old mate will tell you, there's a great spot to go and check out. It's 850 meters around the point from the campsite. So when you're in your campsite, looking at the water, go left. Um, but it's a fair mission. As you can see, as soon as you hit the point, <laughs> it's just these rocks. So 850 meters really does feel a lot longer, but we'll make it around there. Oh, without falling off any rocks. And um, we'll give you a look what it's like, eh? I know, it's supposed to be really pretty and all beachy and stuff there, so... Yeah, one hot tip, leave early if you can. Yeah, it's already... It's got to be low tide, like at the moment it's going out, so we've got plenty of time. But the tide comes all the way up here, like, so you don't want to get stuck anywhere uh, below the high tide mark. And it's walk. like quarter eight in the morning and it's starting to get <laughs> it's, pretty hot, it's so... Hot. But we are here in September, so... And wear shoes! Remember that. Don't oh, wear yeah. pluggers. Don't wear pluggers, that'd be shocking. Anyway, and don't bring kids if you don't have to. <laughs> Oi! Yeah, that's why. And here's the cave. Check it. This is like one of the biggest coastal ones we've found. Like, and it goes everywhere. There's all these little tunnels. Kids can run around in here. Ah, oh, look at the mouth of it. Far out. What do you reckon about this, mate? Oh, I really like it. <laughs> it's pretty bloody nice. Like the top of that, those rocks over there. Yeah, it's like a church oh, steeple weird. or something. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> All right, let's go for a swim. You know what seeps cool, Jack? What? Look at this, look up. What? what? Look at that. It's a little cannibal in, but it's not deep enough. Oh, it's crazy. There we go, we found the rock pool, and I'll tell you what, it is brilliant. Hey, you come back in, babe? Yeah. Oh, God, it's oh, good it's in so here. Nice. The water temp's perfect, it's like just deep enough so you can float around. And look at this view, <laughs> hey?
so if you need to dump your rubbish when you're up at uh, Dampier Peninsula, we've just found a rubbish tip at Beagle Bay. And um, it looks like they're burning it, which is random. I don't know if we just throw our rubbish on top or... This is weird. What do we do? I know about the campfires, eh? Anyway. Oh, quick. We'll get out. Oh, that stinks. Get out of this smoke. Look at that. Oh, oh, that stinks. Oh. There you go. This is the dump at Beagle Bay. And they just burn it all and then looks like they burn it and then just push it down there and then fill her up eventually. So there you go. <laughs> I feel a bit bad throwing me rubbish on the fire. <laughs> it seems what you do up here, right? So we got with Dad to uh, get a picture of this rock. Mum really wants to. So we're going to go take a picture of it. What's it shaped like, Mum? Love heart. Love heart. Yeah. Like this. So wait, hang on. What's the real story? There's a, there's a rock up here. It's a black rock and it's a massive love heart. Yeah. So I'm just going to head down. I just want to get a little photo with the kids, much to their disgust. But anyway. <laughs> and here it is. Look at that. It actually looks like a giant love heart. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It is, eh? Ah, serious, mate. Look at this. This is five to six in the morning. Sun's just come up here at Pender Bay. We're on site C6, so I'll show you, so you believe me, because <laughs> you need to book this one for yourself. It is dead set. Brilliant, mate. You had to go to sleep with the sound of the waves all night. There hasn't been a breath of wind for the last six nights. And uh, we've got this little beachfront spot all to ourselves. So, <laughs> it's pretty insane, mate. If you haven't checked it out, when you're getting up here, north of Broome, you've got to come through, stay a few days at Pender Bay, mate. We booked four and we've stayed seven, then we have to go, but we could do a few weeks easy, mate. It is one of the most relaxing, enjoyable places we've camped, mate. And it's just crazy. So get on this. She's on. She's on, mate. Oh, okay, well, okay. Uh, uh, that's the end of Pender Bay. We have had a mad trip oh. <laughs> back on this bloody access know, road on the roughest part. But we know we've only got three hours and we're back in Broome. So hot tip from us, get up to Pender Bay. We're only going to do four nights and we loved know, it that much. And it's extended. that bloody good mm. that we ended up yeah, staying a full week. Good. And it is just paradise. Mm. Um, there was like eight, nine other families there. The so kids good. were happy. The beach yeah. was perfect. And we had the best weather, 30 to 35 degrees all week. No, no wind. wind. Oh, <laughs> it was insane, mate. Yeah. So, I hope you've enjoyed that. A lot of info there. We got three hours back on this stuff. Uh, Hopefully, we can get yay. back without too much dust, no damage, and um, another couple of weeks in Broome before we head off. So this road is well worth it, though. Oh, it is, mate. Yeah. Like you slow Kingway down. Was awesome. Tire pressures down. Like yeah. I said at the start, don't be scared to drop your tire pressures. I was talking to blokes in there. They're still running 35, 40 pound because they're worried about oh, the rating on their tires. Like, no, like it's a soft, sandy track that's corrugated. Get down, okay? drop them right down. Definitely. Mine are all at 18, 20 yeah. pound, and it gives your van so much more of a softer ride. Definitely and, um, makes it more comfortable. You can thank me later. Anyway, let's go. Any comments, questions, hit us up um, in the post and all the vid details. Excuse we'll my lovely footage, but. She's pretty shaky. <laughs> this road's <laughs> horrid. Catches. See ya!